So the following clip is a video I recorded months back where I was addressing other cymbal smiths on how I deal with hums in my cymbal. And I thought it was kind of interesting and figured I'd share it here to YouTube. So check it out. Hope you enjoy. Hey guys, Timothy Roberts here. Today I want to talk about cymbal hum and a couple possible fixes for getting rid of that nasty note. I get a lot of modification customers send me their symbols and say, it's got this one hum, please get rid of that hum. And what I usually tell them is, I can't get rid of that hum. But what I can do is I can blend that hum into the overtones and the wash of the symbol so that it doesn't stick out as much. And that is really my approach boiled down very simply as to how I deal with symbol hum in a symbol. I want to think of this instrument as an instrument that has tons of hums, tons of tones, and my job as a cymbal smith is to balance those tones into a cohesive sound, and I want those tones to be so intermingled that none of them stick out too far and become way too apparent. I want them all to kind of sit below in the wash so that the stick can be super clear and articulate and the crash feels nice and smooth. Um, and then within that, obviously, we're trying to capture different sonic characteristics like complexity, like trashiness, like smoothness, all of the terms that we like to throw around. So in particular, this symbol right here, it's a 20 inch. It has a really bad tone coming from this band between my fingers here. So first off, when I look at the side view of it, right in the section where the, where the tone is coming from, I, I have to look very closely, but I can see a tendency towards a dip. And it's right just between my fingers in that band where the note is coming from. And that is a really good indicator of what could be going wrong with your cymbal if you have a hum. If there is a flat portion or a portion that tends to go inward or dip lower, that you can almost guarantee there's gonna be something happening in that zone and it might not be something you want. So what I'm gonna do first is I am going to very lightly with a wide face hammer go around in a ring right on that band from the underside of the cymbal. And what I'm looking to do there is I'm looking to put up some support structures underneath that zone that's trying to dip. So I wanna give it some support so that it doesn't wanna dip and maybe just that can be enough to push it up into place. But that depends on a lot of other things. It depends on what I've done on the top. Uh, but personally, I know that with this symbol, I've done quite a bit of top hammering. So there is a lot of tension on the top, but I might have tipped the scale a little bit where there's so much top tension that it's actually causing the, the metal to sink rather than grow into a nice strong shape. After I do that band, what I'm now gonna do is look at the profile and see what is the trajectory up into the bell. A lot of times what I'll notice is I either get a flat portion up into the bell or it'll start to sink right before it hits the bell. If I've done a lot of top work, a lot of top tensioning via lathing, blunt lathing, uh, burnishing, or hammering, I might need to go in and do a really strong band of hammering right at the base of the bell. So I'm gonna do that on the cymbal as well. And we're gonna then take a listen and see, did this take care of that note that was really ugly?
All right, now that we've done that, we're going to check out the shape and we're going to see did that iron out the issues. Then we're going to look at the whole profile of the symbol, uh, either on a stand or by just looking at it with our hands. And we're going to see did that work from the underside, loosen it past a tipping point to where it's kind of slumping and a little bit out of shape. If so, we can pop it on our lathe and do a burnish pass with either the butt end of our lathe tool or a drumstick or a wooden dowel, just something to put a little bit of tension back into the top of the symbol. And we're gonna do that in a very intentional way. So we've worked basically from where my finger is up to the bell. So what we can do now is burnish from the edge all the way up right to where we started the work on the underside. And we can really use a lot of force. And it's like we're pushing tension into this and really reinforcing that uh, that new shape that we've implemented via that bottom work. Now one more trick I want to tell you about, I'm not going to do it on this symbol because I've already done it, uh, but a really useful trick for dealing with a slight slump into the bell is to go on the underside of your bell right at the base before it transitions into the body and right around here do a nice strong line of hammering around that bell. It will start to shape your bell so if you don't want your bell to be bigger keep that in mind but what this can do oftentimes is take so you've got this say this is the transition into the body and you hammer here what you can do is you can kind of if you have a dip you can kind of pull that section up into a nice strong uh, shape by working the bell here with hammering sometimes like I've said in previous videos you can work this area and really get the, the, the shape, like if you have a dip and you work it and you really get that shape uh, heading up and you get it nice and strong all the way around the bell, what you can do is you can go past a tipping point and you can make this part so strong that down below in your playing surface you've also made this section dip and then there's a weird mushy hum thing coming from the playing surface and your bell and your bell zone is nice and strong that might not be what you want either. So it's a tightrope walk where you, we have to be balanced in our approach. We can go too far in one direction and then we create different problems for ourselves. So all of this has to be done with careful consideration and we wanna think less is more. If we do little steps at a time and we layer it with very light amounts of work and then pay attention, look at our shape, you know, maybe set it on the floor of our shop and press around to see if there's soft spots. If we do this very methodically and slow, we can actually save ourselves time in the long run because we don't overwork the material and then have to go back and figure out, well, how do I fix this new problem? All right, so one final thought on this. I played it just right after I did that hammering and you heard that that hum wasn't popping out so much and the pitch of the cymbal is a lot higher. And that's because as I did that work on the underside and then I tightened it back up on top, I had raised the profile up. So the, the, the profile was fairly low before, now it's a little bit taller, so the pitch has gone up. I knew that that was gonna happen and I wanted that for this symbol because it was a little bit low for my taste. So just know that as you are working on these little areas uh, that might have hums, just know that when you do this kind of work, you're also affecting the profile. And, and if you don't want the profile to be raised, you wanna do minimal work to these areas so that you don't have 
uh, your profile shoot up super tall. Also, you need to know that it's important to let this stuff sit and let it rest after you do this kind of work. Revisit it in a day or two. Take time away, get a new perspective, come back. Maybe take the symbol to a gig or put it in a different room so that you can really hear uh, it in a new context. Oftentimes, simply changing our perspective on the symbol can change our mind about a symbol that we're not sure about. All right, so that's that. Please let me know in the comments below what you think. Uh, have you tried this kind of method before? Uh, what kind of issues do you have relating to symbol hum? And how do you deal with it in particular? I'd love to know. Drop comments below and let's get this conversation started. Until next time, see you guys.